what we're doing here is um, fostering or realizing a culture of gratitude, respect, and empowerment for all humans, not just a small group of people. You know, we grow up thinking we have our own special, unique cultures that define us as a group, and then, you know, it gets very fractioned and isolated. But now that we have global communication, we're able to connect with anyone, any part of the world, at any time of day. We're starting to see we're one united culture. And it's important to recognize what is the most important aspect that unites all of us. You know, is it our, it can't be just our language, our skin color, the way we treat each other, if we hug each other, if we kiss each other on the cheeks, or if we, you know, don't do any of that. You know, that's not really how we want to define ourselves. That's very limiting. You know, then it creates this whole system of looking at another culture and comparing it to ours and either saying it's better or worse. And then we start to define ourselves that way. Well, I'm from this culture, therefore I am like this. You know, that's just the way it is. But that's not the way it is. You know, our, our upbringings, our conventional mode of education of only focusing in on what we call data, thoughts, emotions, sensations, by only focusing on thoughts, emotions, sensations, and whatever that pertains to, then it's a very limited way of living life together, together on this beautiful planet. You know, so it's good to understand the limitations of what we call reified intelligence or just conventional intelligence. The only reason that we're in this state of affairs where there's violent, murder, hatred, anything you can label about what's going on in the world today, whether it's the environmental degradation or anything, the only reason we're in this predicament is due to lack of a standardized education and the nature of our own intelligence. That's the only reason. Lack of education. Lack of a proper education. So it's important that for the most important aspect of all humans and for our survival, we need to have a standardized solution into this education. Otherwise, you know, you, you just can't come to terms with what it really is. Just like any other important topic, chemistry, mathematics, physics, music, art, you know, there's a standardized platform where everybody can come together and talk about it in the same terminology, and then we make great results. We get to receive the benefits of that science or art or whatever it is, social science. So in balanced view, you know, we're, we're standardizing this education so that we can all come together and realize that we have an empowered intelligence, we have an empowered identity, regardless of whatever culture we come from, whatever data streams we have. So a standardized solution, and in balanced view, that's the four mainstays. By relying on all four mainstays, the result of complete mental and emotional stability, clarity, discernment, how to use our gifts, strengths, and talents in a beneficial way that, that's beneficial to us and beneficial to others. In order to receive all of these benefits all of the time, it requires all four mainstays. If one is only relying on one of the mainstays, the result can't be guaranteed. It's a simple algorithm. An algorithm means that all parts of the equation are needed for the guaranteed result. If all parts of the equation are used, the result is guaranteed. So, yeah, in our cultural differences and backgrounds, you know, we have different spiritual practices and there's a practice for everything, it seems like. How they make their coffee, how they use their mind. You know, it's just endless, the amount of different practices. So why not train up in the most optimal way to use our minds? So, you know, we need to know what our mind is also. Our mind isn't a thing. Just now, if you stop thinking for a moment, do you, is your mind a thing? Can you find it? 
Is it in this lump of cells in your head? Does that make sense? Does that hold up? Is there any proof that your mind is locked into this skull? You know, what really is our mind? Ask yourself that. When you stop thinking for a moment, what remains? A sense of alertness, your own power to know, cognizance, that's all that remains. That same power to know is what fuels the thinking as well. It's not our state of mind, our, our actual mind is not a, a destination, it's not a special state. You could say it's a basic state that includes and contains all thoughts, all no thoughts, all emotions, all sensations. All of it indivisibly bound in this basic state. The basic state is synonymous with our mind. Or you can call it intelligence. Your intelligence is open intelligence. That's all there is to it. And we just haven't been trained up in that. So in this training, take short moments of recognizing that intelligence that we just identified when we stopped thinking. It doesn't take a lot of effort to emphasize open intelligence. For me, the simple way to realize when I was emphasizing open intelligence was comparing it to when I was only emphasizing data. So then I could get the distinction. Yeah, let's take wanting well-being. When we start thinking about well-being, usually what happens is we start indulging in all the reasons why we don't have well-being. So it creates kind of a, a big story. It starts out small with something like you wake up in the morning, you feel a bit grumpy, you wish you could sleep another hour, and then a whole barrage of stories opens up. <coughs> Now, maybe it's not like that for everyone in the morning, but for me, that's usually what happens. I like to snooze and snooze and snooze, and then by the time I get out of bed, I realize, well, I might be a little bit late, and then all these stories arise, like, how am I going to get everything done? Why do I have so many things to do? Why aren't there more people involved? You know, all this kind of stuff. So whatever it is for you, just take that for a minute. When you emphasize that, does it feel like there's well-being? And then all the emotions start arising. Oh, I'm depressed. Oh, I'm anxious. Or I'm, now I'm angry. Or now I'm desirous. And then we start emphasizing all the emotions. And then the sensations start coming. Oh, actually, I got a headache. And <laughs> my stomach's gurgling. What's it going to bring today? My throat is sore. <laughs> or you know, there's that pain in my back again. Maybe I need to do more sit-ups to balance it out. You see, all, it's a barrage of data. And we've been living life putting all the attention on it. For me, that just created more instability, more confusion, more frustration, just basic frustration. I was frustrated all the time because I wanted well-being. And everything that I did, all my practices that were supposedly going to make this, my set of data more positive so that I would have well-being, finding that it never really worked all the time, I just became more and more frustrated and then focused more and more on the thoughts, emotions, sensations. So in this training, it's a very simple practice. Rather than indulging in all that data, like that story I just mentioned, or avoiding it, you know, avoiding it completely, or trying to replace it, Instead of doing those three tactics, try something new. Let it all be as it is in short moments. And emphasize this indestructible presence, your intelligence. That's it. That's the practice. Now, whenever you start doing this, when you naturally remember, you think, oh, I'm actually indulging right now. And I went to that open meeting today and the instruction was, let it be as it is. I'm going to try that out. Just let it be as it is and start to gain confidence in open intelligence. And when I described the results earlier of mental and emotional stability, keen insight, clarity, discernment. What does discernment mean? The ability to make a good decision, the correct decision. These start to unfold. You know, I can tell you this, but 
without it being your direct experience, you won't really know. So just go out and try short moments today of letting your data streams flow on by. All the thoughts, the emotions, sensations, or just the stream anyway. So try it out. Let them be as they are. Light, you're going to let this breeze and this air just pass through this open meeting space. You're not going to try to rearrange it. Test that out with your thoughts, your emotions, your experiences, your whatever practice you're doing. If you're eating, if you're on the toilet, if you're trying to meditate, if you're dancing, if you're cooking, if you're making love, if you're walking down the street, if you're swimming, everything. Whatever you're doing, just let the flow of all the data streams be as they are. And you'll start to gain confidence in something about you that is so powerful that is never a victim of your data streams or anyone else's. I mean, that's what we want, empowered human beings. We don't want to be co-dependent on data streams because the data will always, it's always changing. You know, you can't have a state of happiness due to the data and have it be there all the time. There's always something that will come that feels like a challenge. So we start to find that there's actual freedom in the immediacy of all experience, regardless of what that experience is. Somebody dying in our family, we rest deeply. We let the data streams about that whole incident be as it is. We find something about us that is completely stable, open and clear, and then, you know, what's needed in that moment will start to just be available. You'll know how to support yourself. You'll know how to support the other ones involved. Otherwise, we're just focusing in on all the data streams. And, you know, it's just like being in a valley as opposed to being on top of the mountain. Open intelligence is like being on top of the mountain where there's a clear vantage of everything going on. It takes a while to get to the top of the mountain though, right? So, you know, I can say all these things about the practice of open intelligence, about the Four Mainstays, but until you actually start climbing the mountain, it, it's not an effortful mountain though. It might seem challenging, but it doesn't require a lot of effort. And balance you, you have the practice of short moments, which is like how to walk up the mountain. And then you have a trainer, which is like the guide that will show you the way to the top of the mountain rather than off at the edge of the cliffs. You'll have a training in balance you, which you could liken it to having the most precise map to get to the top of the mountain. And then you'll have a community. That's the fourth mainstay. And the community is also everyone else that wants to get to the top of the mountain to see that m amazing view. However, we're not all competing against each other to get to the top to be the first one to plant the flag. We're all helping each other up. And you get to see that demonstrated here. People from all over the world interested in getting to the top of the mountain, seeing what about us as humans is actually totally powerful and actually can create solutions to this mess we have got ourselves into. They didn't get us into it. There is no they. We are they. So we've gotten ourselves into the mess and now we have a solution, a standardized solution to get us out of it where everyone could live a life of prosperity, a sense of flourishing, where everyone has all the resources they need, like clean water, food, shelter, where the children have a proper education, where there's just harmony between everyone. So, it takes some practice though. And you know, look around at the community, see how we operate here at the center. Whether we hug someone or we don't hug someone, that doesn't, that doesn't define our well-being whether we are really happy and smiling or just kind of looking grumpy, that's not an indication of what's really going on. What I started to see was is I could really be myself for the first time and start to feel comfortable with it. Because everything I labeled about myself that I didn't feel comfortable with, I was always trying to indulge, avoid, or replace it with no luck. No luck at all. It just failed and failed time and time again. And when I came here and started letting all of my stress be as it was, 
all my ideas about enlightenment be as they were, all of the reasons why I was frustrated and not in the place in life where I thought I wanted to be, when I started letting these all be as they were, I started to feel relief, an actual relaxation. People have been telling me all my life, you need to relax. And when somebody told me to relax, it would make me more tense. So here, just short moments allowing everything to be as it is. <laughs> okay, wow, well, I'm relaxing. I'm letting my everything just be as it is. I'm not trying to control it. And there's actual, now there's some relaxation. I didn't need to purify my mind of any kind of thoughts. My thoughts don't have anything to inform other than how can I be of most benefit. That's how it is for me now. When I wake up in the morning now and I'm sleeping in and realize and all these things to do, it's, I don't launch into self-criticism anymore. I just see it as this fuel for being of benefit and getting everything done. And it just, I see it as this urge to be of benefit. And that's come about just through the practice. And the sensations come up. I know whether or not I need to take action. I don't spend a lot of time worrying about all the physical sensations like I used to. I used to spend days analyzing all the physical sensations looking it up online, going to the library, contacting ten specialists and studying the, the topic and, and never feeling any better. You know, having a lot more knowledge about it but never really feeling okay with it. And now it comes up and I'm like, oh, I think I know what to do. I let it be as it is and just like a line drawn in midair, the data self-releases. I didn't have to do anything for that to happen. One minute there's a headache, the next moment I, I don't even re recognize there's a headache. And then, oh, there's a headache again, and now I'm hungry, and now what are they thinking? You know, just this seamless flow. But the flow becomes one-pointed focus. How can I be of most benefit to myself and to others? And that makes it exciting. You know, life doesn't have to be such a drag anymore. My, I had diaries about how life was a drag, and I wrote songs about it and complained to my friends about it, found other friends to complain about it, and I, at one point I just got tired of that. It may have been fun for a while, but I just saw it wasn't creating benefit for my friends, my family. You know, I was kind of dragging my family down into this, and they would get involved because they wanted to help, but then they would just get in there too, and we'd start mucking around. and. And now that I don't do that, they don't have to be involved anymore. What a relief for them. I don't have to try to fix everything about their life anymore. I see they're actually really happy and amazing and, wow, they're incredible. And I support them, they support me. We all support each other. Yeah, yeah and this all, the instinctive realization of open intelligence. When you stop thinking for a moment, you identify open intelligence. It doesn't require anything more than that. You start to know who you truly are. Your identity is interconnected with this, this space, with the space of everything. It's like space, but it's an intelligence. I mean, our intelligence is who we are. <coughs> and when you, hear, when you come to open meetings and you hear shares from the trainers and everyone else, it starts to become instinctive, meaning you don't really have to think about it any longer. It took me about a year before I stopped really thinking always about it, trying to understand it. But I had glimpses of, okay, there's an instinctive recognition that I am this open intelligence. It feels good, so I'll just repeat that recognition again and again until it's always obvious. Short moments of open intelligence, repeated many times, become automatic. Just the way you learn anything else, you practice again and again and it becomes automatic. Your instinctive recognition, now it can't be taken away. It just, nobody can tell you otherwise. You know, once that instinctive recognition is there one time, you have it. It's boom. The light was turned on. You know who you are. You can stop the search. <laughs>